Hey, it's John Reed, JWD.com. Look who I got with me. I got Thomas Young. Hi How's there. Going? Good. So, DCOM day two. Yeah. San Jose. There's a lot we can't talk about, <laughs> but there is some stuff we can talk about that's really important, I think, which is HANA and how developers can be transitioning and thinking about this, these new paradigms, if you will, or whatever you want to call them. But let's start with yourself because you've kind of come full circle in a lot of ways. Tell us, first of all, what your current role is in SAP. Yeah, my current role uh, as of the start of this year is I'm back in product management. So I'm in HANA product management and I am responsible for developer tools or the we call it the developer persona. Um, so, so anything that a developer would touch as they, as they work with HANA. So it um, means a variety of things from SQL script to some of the more advanced things that you can model in HANA to in the transactional world, writing UIs on top of HANA, ABAP on HANA, all that, all that good stuff. And early in this decade, you, you blogged a lot on ABAP development. That's in many ways how you kind of started developing your expertise in that in a public way. And now you're, you started blogging about developing yeah. in HANA. So well, tell us about your own transition. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a cycle. I mean, when I first started doing the, the blogging years ago, I was a customer, and, right. and, and I was in a fairly new world there for, for ABAP developers, BSP, and doing web apps and stuff like that, and I just wanted to share my experiences. We, we were doing some cool stuff the customer I was working at, and other people were doing stuff, and we were just a way of exchanging ideas and code and, and the, in this new design world, if you will. And uh, you know, and then I came to work for SAP, and then uh, you know, the products matured a little bit, and and I found myself doing more video tutorials and stuff like that just because it was more about um, you know, how to learn a particular technique. And what I saw when I started learning HANA myself as a developer, it's like, oh, I've got to rethink how certain things, how I, how I design certain things, how, how I approach certain things. I've got to go relearn some stuff. And that's what I want to do with the, with the blogging again is just share those experiences because so many developers come to me or, or saying in general or whatever, how do I get ready for HANA? You know, I hear about it, Sapphire, TechEd, whatever, I know it's going to be big. How can I make sure that my skills are ready when this hits my, my company or, or you know, wherever, wherever I'm working? And, um, and that's what I want to share is the, the journey I'm going through now because I assume that you know, I'm uh, six months, a year ahead where a lot of developers are going to be because I'm working on the internal builds and stuff like that. I get to see the tools before everybody else, but what are the mental preparations and, and retraining that I'm going through to, to share that with other people. Yeah, so what are some of the, the HANA tools that are coming out? I know you work on a lot of stuff. What are some of the things you actually can share? Yeah, I, I mean, some of it's there now. Of course, we have the, uh, the HANA Studio, which is um, a, a little bit of a hybrid because you have people that maybe are not traditional developers, not hardcore coders working in there because you do modeling, you can build views, you can build analytic views, calculation views. Um, so it's something that maybe someone from the BW, the analytics world would use as well. But you have programmers getting in there already and writing SQL script. So that's something that a anybody on, on HANA can do today. Um, you know, and SQL script is like a, similar to like a stored procedure, you, you know, from other databases. Um, and, and allows you to go beyond what you can do with a single SQL statement and, and, uh, and have a data flow you know, um, from one command to another. And um, so, so that's the main thing that developers see today. Of course, then there's specific analytics tools, BW on HANA and stuff like that. But uh, where I'm really focusing a lot of my time is on the SQL script, the SQL language itself, but then preparing the next wave of tools, which will be the ones that people can use to build um, transactional applications mm. on HANA and custom applications. We, can't, we haven't released that yet outside of SAP. We are building those tools. We're using them ourselves. Get them to the point where they're ready for customers and partners to use them and then we're going to let everybody loose. From uh, all up to OLTP, yeah. this is HANA, HASA's vision, right? Yeah, yeah. We're and it's, headed right it's real. I mean, we're yeah. building those apps now and, and yeah. it's, it's, gonna, it's a multi-prong sort of thing. It's, it's ABAP. So special capabilities in, in the ABAP environment for taking advantage of the power of HANA, pushing some processing down, interacting with, with HANA. It's uh, uh, somewhat the Java world through, through some of the, the new tools, the, the Java platform uh, on demand. Uh, have our, all of our on demand stuff has hooks into HANA so there will be special ties there. 
And, and then um, what, what uh, Vishal has been talking about, collapsing the layers, a, a two-tier approach where we can even do um, development directly in HANA, with HANA as the application server. And that's probably the part that we've, we've talked about conceptually, or Vishal has from a high level. We haven't really released much of the details about that. And that's actually where I spend a lot of my time because it's, uh, because it's uh, very early and um, there's a lot of work to be done there. But that's the kind of thing that we'll show at, uh, at TechEd this year. We'll do, we'll do hands-on at, at TechEd this year. That's, that's uh, where we are in the phase. When I hear you talking about this stuff, I, my, my initial response is, as for an SAP developer, you, you better change or become irrelevant. Is that fair, or is that too strongly put? Or yeah, I yeah, I don't know if you're relevant, uh, but uh, but if you want, not, not in the center of things. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, uh, we heard in the keynote this morning, relevance is uh, is binary. You're relevant oh, right. or you're not relevant. Yeah, right. Uh, right. But uh, <laughs> but maybe in the, the the SAP ecosystem is big and, and it spans a number of years. If you if you certainly want to be the the, you know, the star in the community, you know, uh, on the on the leading edge of things, it, it, you definitely have to. And I think it's going to be pretty unavoidable, to to not be aware of of what's going on, and you know, beginning to think about the database is more than just a place to store data. Uh, that you can put processing there and and increase the performance of your application instead of decrease it, as would have been the case in the past. And then all that. That that does to branch out and affect the way you design the whole rest of the application. Yeah, you talked about that. There's big changes in design as well. Yeah, um, I mean the first thing that, that that hit me personally, I went to Germany a couple of weeks after starting the new job, and I was sitting down and meeting with all the teams and studying and reading wikis and everything. And as a longtime ABOP developer, the first thing that hit me was like, oh my, I, I need to brush up on my SQL skills. Mm-hmm. And it's not that ABOP developers don't know SQL, but We've, we've done so much to sort of abstract it, to, re, to reduce it. I mean, you might do a join, but then again, you might uh, join data in memory in, on ABOP, you know, with loops and stuff like that. And, and uh, we tend to, uh, ABOP developers tend to uh, be untrusting of the database, I guess would be the best way to put it. We like uh, to do things in ABOP because we can control the performance. And when we rely on the database, we're, we're never quite sure what's going on inside that thing. Um, and you have to rethink that. Um, because now you can trust the database, you can control it, you can get down and and uh, and control what's going on inside there, even as an ABOP developer. And you need to to uh, uh, release some of that control, let it go down there, and and then have the skills to do that. So that was the first thing. And then um, the other thing is in ABOP, we think we tend to think in rows. We do loops, we process each row, and um, and Hana, of course, you can do that. But to take advantage of parallelization. That, that sort of thing, row-wise processing kills parallelization. Mm-hmm. So we have to begin to think and design in batches of data sets um, and, and not rows. And, and that's just a different way of thinking and designing as well. So n- not everything is driven just by the fact that it's in memory. Um, that's really driven by the fact that we have the power to take advantage of multiple cores and multiple processes and things like that. Mm-hmm. You and I have had an ongoing off and on conversation for a long time now about skills and programmers and what to do and one thing I think we both agree on is that waiting until your project embraces these tools yeah. is not the best approach right um, some people get lucky and they're on the cutting edge projects great uh, but but to use that as an excuse not to get started is wrong right so what what can developers do right now yeah I mean that's part of the reason why I started the blog now rather than wait you know however long it'd be before op op developers are really developing on Hana. It's like, there's so much that you can do now. I went and bought a learning SQL book, you know, an, an O'Reilly book, um, because I wanted to refresh my core SQL skills in preparation for some of the things I'm gonna be doing later. You know, that's that's a simple thing. You don't need us, you know, you don't need anything to do that. You go buy a book, it, it, you know, you don't even need access to a Hana system to, to brush up on your basic SQL skills. Uh, so, the laying the foundation of preparing to think differently, studying, uh, reading, the, those are the things that, that, that developers can absolutely do now. And, and, um, and they have the sandbox system right. preview uh, edition, yeah. so there's no reason why everybody shouldn't go out and, and get their feet wet and, and actually see what it looks like. I, I mean, I, I always, 
Uh, you can whiteboard, you can conceptualize, but until I can log in via an IDE and write a little bit of code, it's not real for me. Yeah, yeah. And I, a lot of developers are the same way. And, and the fact that we have that preview sandbox that you can do that is, is really important in, in my opinion. And there's no reason to wait for that first project or that, uh, that first, um, um, yeah, you're, you know, the fact that your company is doing a project or something to do that. The right. Individual developers need to take that on themselves, go prepare, go do that now. Yeah, absolutely. Straight from the mouth of Thomas yeah. Young. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.